In this video, we will work on the back end of this application. As you may guess, there are two parts in the back end of this application. The first part is getting the inference from the object detection model that we have trained. So when a user uploads an image on this app, we will perform inference on this app using the object detection model. The results of this inference will be parsed to a large language model, which is the second part of the back end. So let's first implement this part where we perform inference on a given image, and then we will work on developing the element part of the application. Afterwards, we will combine them together, and we will basically make a Flask API which we can access the results of these influences. First of all, you will have to make two folders for your application. The first one being a folder where to save the files for the front end, and the second one will be the folder where you can save your back end files. Once you have created these folders, you can open the backend folder and create two other folders named assets where you will store the weights, YOLO, the weight that we have fine tuned, and the best.pt file here. In the script, we will add an inference.py file and the chat.py file which we'll work on later. We will also create an application.py file where we will write the code to build the Flask API. But let's first work on the inference only, but before you get started, one important thing is to set up your environment for this application. So I'm using virtual environment. I have created a virtual environment named disease detection. You can also work with conda environments if you are more comfortable with them. Once you have created an environment, one important consideration is to always keep the Python version to be greater than or equal to 3.9 whenever you are working with large language models. So, you have to use Python version to be greater than or equal to 3.9. Once you have done that, we'll be needing several things in this application. The first one, of course, is we have to install Ultralytics since we are building our application from the point where we are performing inference on an image. Let's first install Ultralytics. So once we have done that, we can write the code for inference at least. Here, we first of all import YOLO from Ultralytics and also import NumPy as MP. We will simply write a function called inference. It will receive an image and it will simply give us the results. We will have to initialize a model. So the model is equal to YOLO access backslash best.pt. This will initialize our model. In order to get the results, we will simply parse the image to the model and we can also set a confidence parameter. Let's adjust it to 0.4. Then I will create a NumPy matrix with the same dimension as that of the image, but store only zeros. The reason why we are doing this is that we want to save the results of the inference in this image. Also, we will be using the names of the classes on which our model is trained and the names of the classes which are present inside the image. So the classes dictionary will contain all the names and the names in which our model is trained. The names underscore info will simply contain all the classes that are actually present inside a given image. Let me do something here. For R and results, infer is equal to R dot plot. This will simply overwrite the image. So using the dot function, you get the bounding boxes and the label of the class forms the image. You don't have to separately draw the bounding boxes and so on and so forth. This is the reason why we have just initialized infer as a numpy array beforehand. And then we simply store the results of the r.plot function in the infer array. Then we read the names of all the classes which are in the art of names and the names infer list will be equal to r.boxes. We get all the boxes object inside the given result and the classes corresponding to those boxes. And then we just come into the list. So now we have all the things that we need and we can return all this information. Then return infer names, infer classes, and maybe let's test the last one, okay? When I make a mistake, we have to return these outside the for loop. So let's fix this. Now, our function is good to go. The change and name of the function to inference. Maybe we can test it out. Let me copy an image onto here. Okay, so we have saved the image. Let's test the script out and then we have the image in the assets. All we have to do is just import CV2. And next, what we're going to do is image equals CV2. Once we have read the image, oh, oh, sorry. Let me just get this information. Inference image names and classes are equal to inference dot image. Then CV2 I'm show and reference inference image. 
we also want to print the other information as well. So print names of the classes names, then print classes present in the image. Okay, so that's correct. Let's add JPEG here and change this to I'm right. And let's run the code. All right, as you can see, we have successfully received the inference. And as you can see here, we have the names of the classes. But there's just one confusion here. I guess we'll put the text in the third class. Return infer classes names infer. Okay, so you can see the name of the classes and the images were swapped because we're returning them in the wrong order. Although we are reading them in the right order, I think we need to put classes in the data set and classes in the image. Now let's see this again. Let's add JPEG here and change this to I'm right. And let's run the code. All right, as you can see, we see the names of the following classes. These are all the label IDs and the names of the class corresponding to that. We can see that there are two classes present in the image and both have the label 20. So that would be this tomato leaf spot and we can see the inference image here. Now we know that our inference code is running perfectly well. So we can basically move on to the chatbot part of the backend. Let me clean up this testing code since we don't really need this. We're okay now. This inference.py file has this inference function, which we can use to perform inference given an image. All right, now let's start working on the chatbot part of our application. Okay, first of all, we will need to install Langchain, OpenAI Tick Token, and I guess that's it. These are all the things that we will need for the chatbot part of the application. Let's start installing them. Once we are done, what we could do is make some imports from Langchain. So from Langchain.prompt, we will import the prompt template. And similarly, we will import chat OpenAI from chat models. So let's put for chat OpenAI. We will also import LLM chain from Lane chain. Chains import LLM chain. So these are all the things that we need. We've also added the OpenAI API key. Now let's start working on building the chatbot part. First, we will create a variable to store the name of the model that we want to use. We can use GPT-3.5 Turbo, or if you have access to the GPT-4 API, you can also use GPT-4. I'm just implementing this lineup here. You can use GPT-4 if you do have access to it. Now, we will create an instance of the chat OpenAI class. We will pass the model name that we are using. So model name is equal to the name, and we will set the temperature of the chatbot to be 0.3. I'm not setting a very high temperature, but since this is mostly related to the information that the chatbot has to give, we don't want it to get very creative. It should just stick to the point and not start hallucinating. We will parse the OpenAI API key. This will create an instance of the chat OpenAI class. Now, we can basically use LangChain to get the response from the GPT 3.5 model. So let me use these functions, just the chatbot function. Next, we'll pass it some info, which is basically the dictionary that we have defined above. We will parse the history of the conversation that has been going on between the user and the chatbot. Of course, we will also parse the current message that the user has parsed. So first, find a prompt template. Now, the prompt template is going to be something like this. You are a farming expert with specialized knowledge in diseases. A farmer comes to you with the name of a specific plant disease and some basic information about it. Your job is to guide the farmer. So we will add information about the disease. We will save it in info chat history. This will be history. All right, so this is basically the prompt template that we will use and let's create a prompt template object. So prompt is equal to prompt template equals the content that we have to find above. And we tell them that the input labels are going to be info history and message. Now we can initialize an LLM chain. We parse the large language model that we are using and we have defined the large number model right here. And the prompt is equal to prompt that is defined. Now we will invoke this LLM chain. Let me write response is equal to chain dot predict info is equal to info history equals history and message is equal to message, right? This will just give us the response from the large language model and we will just return this response. All right, so.